Hi there, I'm Dr. Amanda Taylor. I'm a neurologist at Southeast Veterinary Neurology. I'm here to talk to you today about feline infectious peritonitis, or FIP. FIP is a pathogenic form of a coronavirus that occurs in cats. This is different from COVID-19. It's a different form of coronavirus, but it is in the same family of viruses. Clinical signs of FIP depend upon the form of FIP that is affecting the cat. There are effusive forms where cats develop effusions or build up of fluid in body cavities, which can make it difficult for them to breathe and make them feel poorly, make it difficult for them to eat. They can develop forms that affect their eyes and their vision. They can also develop forms that unfortunately affect their nervous system, which can prevent normal ability to walk, normal vision, and affect their balance and coordination system. Most cats affected by FIP do not do well generally physically, have poor body weights, not great appetites, and most clients would be concerned that their cat is sick when it's brought into the clinic. Cats may have signs of becoming icteric or yellow with this disease in their skin if it has affected their liver. If they have an effusion or a fluid buildup in a body cavity, that may be able to be palpated by the veterinarian or appreciated by the client. Their, their cat's belly is becoming larger and larger without a good reason for it while the cat is losing weight. Diagnosis of FIP is incredibly challenging. Because FIP is a coronavirus, Cats are actually vaccinated for other coronaviruses in their lifetime, and some cats may have been infected with an enteric or GI form of a coronavirus earlier in their lifetime. So when we try to test them for this through blood tests, for example, that look for previous exposure, those are often positive. When we look for viral DNA, those tests are not always reliable. And so it can become really challenging to make a diagnosis easily without advanced testing. Most clinicians will look for the following signs, such as elevated globulins on blood work, a positive titer, and if the cat has neurologic disease, classic changes of FIP on MRI, which involve enlargement of the ventricular system of the brain and inflammation of the ventricular lining with a mucoid fluid within the ventricular system. Treatment for FIP historically consisted of supportive care and steroid therapy. Fortunately, there are much better treatment options available to us now that are legal. These consist of antiviral treatments such as GS441524 and molnupiravir, which are available legally in the U.S. at compounding pharmacies due to an exception FDA has made for the licensing of these drugs. Most cats will respond up to 85% to treatment with these drugs over a three-month course of treatment. Prognosis with FIP is guarded. Although we have a really good response rate with the antivirals, up to half of cats that are treated can relapse when treatment is discontinued or can relapse from their signs while treatment is ongoing. So there is concern that this may not be a long-term cure for many cats. Additionally, cats with severe disease may not respond to treatment due to how far their disease has progressed. In closing, if you're concerned that your cat has signs consistent with FIP, I recommend you contact your family veterinarian, as most of them are now well informed of how to treat this disease with the new availability of antivirals for our pets. If your family veterinarian has any questions about this or feels that referrals should be performed because your pet is having neurologic signs, prompt referral to a veterinary neurologist such as those at Southeast Veterinary Neurology is recommended.